Bem-vindos a mais um Sonoridades, episódio de hoje com o Robin Flynn, vocalista e guitarrista e líder do Machine Head. A gente aproveitou a estadia dele no Brasil para falar do disco novo, de novidades é que podem estar na manga para o futuro, entre outras curiosidades. Confiram aí. Hours of Kingdom and Crown conceived, what inspired the creation of the concept, the production, and the scene between the characters? Uh, I mean, it, it was basically written pretty much entirely over the pandemic. So it was a lot of isolation. Uh, I couldn't see some of my band members because of, as a result. And it just ended up, you know, coming into a very pure Machine Head record. You know, I think. The fact that it's a concept album made it very interesting in the sense that I wasn't writing from my own place anymore. I was writing from two different characters who hated each other's guts, and uh, and it made it really fun and, and an interesting process. And many have praised what would be a return to the Christic uh, Machine Head, but this being the tenth studio album. Would it be possible to say that this is the band's most mature, best produced, the most creative album? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that, I mean, I love all our records, you know what I mean? Like, it's a, it's a hard, it's like asking what's your favorite kid, you know, or something. Like, I just, I, I'm really proud of it. I think we really went way outside of our comfort zone and way outside of the box. And I think we just wrote something that's pretty unique and pretty special. And there will be three shows in Brazil with conceptual set lists. How do you bring this history to the stage? And what it's like to bring all this to an audience that has been waiting for you, for the band, to return for that many years? know if we're so concerned about the story when we're playing on stage you know we're just playing songs and we just play the set and we don't try it this it's not a concept tour you know this is an evening with so we play a three-hour show and we just kind of we, we make the set flow more based on the mood of the songs and you know really strong opening and then we kind of slow it down in the middle you know pick it back up and you know to us a live show is more like about you know, peaks and valleys, not necessarily about the one album. And Machine Head is a band that crosses generations and the algorithm bubble, always ahead of its, of its time. So how do you deal with artificial intelligence and at the same time see vintage items like vinyl making a comeback? How do you deal with this duality? Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't even think about AI, <laughs> artificial intelligence. I, uh, you know, I just write songs and play music and, you know, put it out and go on tour. So, yeah, I, I don't know. And how do you deal with the comeback of vintage items like vinyl? 
Um, I mean, I think I think vinyl's great. I mean, I think that there's definitely a, a market out there for people who want to buy vinyl and even cassettes, which I think is great because that's all the stuff that I grew up with. But um, yeah, so we, we make it for the people that want it and then we put it out on the other platforms for the people who want it. possibility that the plot of the new album will grow into other spheres, series, comics, games, does this interest um, you as an artist? I mean, I definitely think that it's a, a rich enough concept that it could transfer into comics, movies, Broadway plays. I mean, it's a very, I think it's a very universal story and that it, it you know, it, it really, it's a story about love. And it's about the loss of love and murder and revenge. And I think that those are all very human elements that people can connect with. And since this uh, Kingdom of Crown inspired you like on Attack on Titan, was it like the first thing you saw? Was it like, this will be my idea for a conceptual album? Well, Not, not necessarily. I mean, I've been, I've been forming the idea for a while, and you know, I think it just, you know, I, you're thinking you're just able to kind of put a story together, and there's many elements that influence it. But in the end, you gotta, you gotta kind of tell the story from, you know, your heart and from, you know, what things have influenced you in your life. So, you know, while you are telling the story through the eyes of two different people. You know, I couldn't just read a story, you know, like I had to connect with it in my own way, with my own experiences in life and, and how it connected to the songs. And um, how does it, how do you see the band's next step? Um, what would that be? And what would you say to the younger version of yourself? Well, that's a, that's a lot of questions in one question there. <laughs> um, I mean, at the moment, I don't see any next step for the band. You know, we're just out here, you know, we're still touring the record. We're kind of just getting back from the pandemic. And uh, it's the first time we've come to South America in a long time. And I'm really excited to be here and just excited to play these shows and, and play this new music for people who haven't even heard it yet. You know, they haven't even heard our last record yet. So I'm just, you know, thinking about that. What would you say to your younger self? About what? about um, about um, the things you would be in the future and uh, how would you prevent of doing mistakes? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I probably wouldn't have listened to my... <laughs> my younger self wouldn't have listened to the, my older self, so... <laughs> I don't know if I would, it would have been... It, you know, I don't know if there would have been a reason for that.